maybe you have a customer success um, program or something like that where you've got people that are helping the clinics or healthcare systems implement this tool, having some case scenarios is very, very helpful. Being able to, sh to show a clinician, for example, you know, patient Smith comes in, you did X, Y, Z, this is how much time it took, this is what you're able to bill, or this is when you're able to bill it. One of the questions I get asked a lot is in regards to remote therapeutic monitoring or RTM, what that requires to implement that successfully in a practice, whether it's an organization that has developed an app or a tool or a device or a piece of software, and they're looking to sell that or provide that service to clinics or healthcare systems or the healthcare systems or clinics themselves, there's questions on both sides. Um, who needs to do what or how do we make this a seamless transition or integration without totally messing up the workflows, the processes, staff training. So the question usually gets posed, proposed like this. Um, I've got this tool. I've got this device. It's going to really help uh, clinics or clinicians with, uh, I don't know, monitoring a home, home exercise program compliance. Let's just use that because that's one of the most uh, common or most frequently uh, used systems. Um, what needs to be done, or my clients are coming and asking me, or you know, the customers of this are, of, of this product are coming and asking me how they how they integrate this without a headache. Who do they have to have involved? So that really comes back to staff training and workflow, right? The nice thing about RTM or remote therapeutic monitoring, and this is what I tell all my clients or the clinics that I work with, um, or the technology companies that are that are coming to me looking for go-to-market strategy, is that. The nice thing about RTM is that, especially for that initial code, that uh, 98975 code, a lot of that is already be being done by clinicians at the point of service during that initial evaluation. They're coming in and the patient is meeting with the clinician, the clinician's setting them up on, on this, let's use this home, home exercise program example, they're, use, they're showing them how to log into the app, they're showing them where the, where the exercises are located, how to track their progress, um, how to do secure messaging if that's a function. Um, so they're already doing that. The question is just, okay, then what do they have to document in order to bill it? And how do they how do they charge it and all that kind of thing? So that's much of less of a heavy lift than you know radically changing the workflows. On the other side of things is the the clinicians or the 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 clinic itself using this specific tool. Um, and that requires a little bit of training. So there does require some staff training on, this is the, the platform itself. This is how you log in. This is the user interface. This is what the patients see. This is what you see. Some basic level training like that. And then it's just a matter of, okay, instead of using whatever free or um, paid even home exercise program that we've been using for years, we're just going to log into the, into, into the new one, right? And that's going to be where we manage all of our exercises and track patients' progress and, and all of that. There are some things for remote therapeutic monitoring, especially for those later codes, um, that you need to track when the patient logs in, how often they're logging in, how much time a clinician is spending with that patient. But again, the the programs that are doing this uh, at a, already at a, at a pretty sophisticated level have all that tracking in place. So then it's just it alerts you and says, okay, you've spent 20 minutes with the patient. You can now bill that 98980 code. Um, or whatever the code is. I might be off on the numbers. There's too many CPT codes, right? Um, so the, the, the initial training is just the staff training of this is what the, the tool or the technology, this is how you use it, this is how you log in, this is how you train a patient to use it. And then on the other side is the workflow. So when do we bill? How do we bill? How do we document? Some of that will be handled or should be handled by the device or the, the platform itself. As I mentioned before, many of them have a time tracker, for example, or an instance tracker. You can log in and see, you know, patient Smith logged in on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and they did these exercises, and they spent this much time, or they shot me a message or a secure message. And now I'm logging in and I'm tracking, um, I'm sending them a response. And all the time, this platform is tracking that time and it will alert me, okay, you're at 19 minutes, you need one more minute in order to bill that next code. Um, the big thing is, really not so much redoing or revamping all the workflows is just changing little habits, right? Um, I don't know if you've read the book, Tiny Habits. I like it a lot. Go read it. Um, but he talks a little bit about like, you just got to floss one tooth, right? If you get up to floss one tooth, you're going to floss all of them. 
Um, so it's not like we need to do this huge, massive change to implement something like remote therapeutic monitoring. It's really just, okay, these are a couple different changes you need to do in your workflow. And that's gonna allow you to bill for this code, for that code, that'll document what is necessary to document in order to justify the charges, X, Y, Z. From a tool or device standpoint, what do you need to do or how can you enable uptake and adoption of your tool, of your technology in a clinical workflow is have some of those uh, case scenarios ready for your for your onboarding. For your Maybe you have a customer success um, program or something like that where you've got people that are helping the clinics or healthcare systems implement this tool. Having some case scenarios is very, very helpful. Being able to, sh to show a clinician, for example, you know, patient Smith comes in, you did X, Y, Z, this is how much time it took, this is what you're able to bill, or this is when you're able to bill it. And being able to walk through very specific examples or cases, if you would, of when a clinician could bill for one of the, the, ther the RTM codes greatly improves and takes some of that ambiguity away from clinicians um, when it comes to them billing and charging for those codes. So again, break it down into two sides. The first piece is the workflow piece and the staff training, obviously basic training on how the, the product or the, the software works. Um, and then this is these are the, the minor changes you need to make in your workflow to be able to bill and capture that billable time, done. And then on the, the tool side or the technology side, the platform side, you need to provide your patients or your, your clients, in this case, um, customers, with some specific examples of this is use examples of this is how you can use this tool. This is when it, it's um, this is when you can build things. Give them a couple different options, a couple different scenarios, if you would. And most clinicians, they're smart enough to figure out. Okay, I've seen the the example now. I can take it and run with it. But providing some of those tools, some concrete tools, initially helps get both clinic administrators, managers, and clinicians themselves kind of an idea, a concrete representation of, okay, this is how this tool is going to fit into our workflows. So 